everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video it is a day in our lives Liv is there having breakfast, just the dogs, Fred, three dogs and we're watching Scooby Doo Happy days <laughs> so Have the breakfast we will be on into the yard and quite a bit of work to do today and then hopefully get some slurry spread but that is optional, that is quite optional, it all depends on how we go on We have the brekkie, which consists of a mug of coffee and we get going So we just walked across the lawn there and it is miserable outside cold wet windy and these are our calves that are off milk they're all unborn calves they were grazing away in the lawn but with the cold weather and snow that came we gave them this little annex in here so they could get out of it and be nice and dry and then we also have three lads here and then the calves in there just got here and we have a fault on the feeder we've it cleared now no water and when that happens it turns itself off it done that at three o'clock this morning so there's no calves fed so well there'll be some fed before three o'clock but the majority of calves wouldn't have fed since three now in the normal system that wouldn't make any difference where you'd be feeding them twice a day anyways but because they haven't been feeding themselves when they want we end up with a bit of a queue we also have 20 new calves come in last night so we're going to have to go off do something else while they get themselves fed so it take a backlog with that many calves takes what about an hour and because it will be a while since they last fed they'll all get two liters and when they've cleared themselves then we'll come back and we'll feed the last batch of calves that's come but if we had our new feeder still waiting on approval the new feeder has a sim card in it or connects to the internet and it'll send an alert to the phone to say that that's happened and then you'll be able to get there at 3 o'clock in the morning go in sort it calves keep feeding and that's why I'm mad to get this new feeder it's a miserable day outside so while they're feeding the job I think I said at the start our vet was out yesterday and he wants us to move the feeder the reason he wants the feeder moved is the slope of the shed starts here goes down to the bottom of the shed then out and that's wetting a lot of bedding and he wants us to move it to not wet as much bedding he says it'd be better if we had drains or stuff like that but we can't put in anything at this stage so we're going to move the feeder so the hay is to get moved which that's what i'm going to start hinting now if i can make my way out between the bales we have to pull all bales and stuff up to try and keep the wind east wind out here is where we're going to put the feeder we're going to be putting it under the canopy at the hay shed so we have to tidy up this area here to get all these bales of hay and straw moved out of here so that's going to expand the calf shed there's 60 calves and now another 20 there's 80 calves in there now so they'll expand out here we're both inner feeders on the outside on the concrete the hay shed only has a gravel floor so the concrete kind of runs in a line there so we'll bolt them on that concrete there's a good bit of tidying up to do here because it's not an area that gets much use and the skid steer is our old skid steer my father sold to an uncle of ours so we'll drag that forward and hopefully try and get him to take that away it's a massive skid steer wouldn't mind having another one but can't really find much of them but yeah that's what i have to do now so we get to tell you get moving it and we're moving it over there's nine bulls in that shed there or the other side cleaned out on made a start last night and we'll just stack it all in there I know not enough shed space so there's now not enough shed space we get hit sorted second job after taking on calves is push into all the cattle the boys there give them their food third job of the morning is feed the cattle first feeder to go in is for the weanlands which are now in the shed all the time, rape is finished so they're really starting to get through silage now need one over two ton of silage into them and two bales of silage so they're really starting to get through it which would be grand won't be too long getting through the pit but from next week hopefully the weather settles a little bit better than it is today it is a bit milder and then that shed will be emptied we'll start distributing, batching and fencing that's the job for the latter half of next week because beginning of next week we have sorry to put out piping or bell piping to do and then we'll be moving on to getting all them boys out of the shed for now they're all shot in 
and they're motoring through silage now that there's nothing else for them. So, we're getting fed. It's all going on here. Road the tank around. Let's try to get around to the day of Peter. I'm trying to get a bail. And Father Phil is moving the lane tonight here. So I think uh, Bro and Father Phil are going to suck out drains now that there's plenty of water around. We see there's two or three drains in the farmer block. So they're going to get them sucked out. We live get the feet and then so. We're going to grab a bail of reds over and put it into the boys. Should be all out by this day week. We should have. There shouldn't be 50 cattle left in that shed, or less even. We shouldn't, we should, we should have the most of them out, hopefully. Hopefully, if all goes to plan. Yeah. Yeah. Now that the whalings are fed, two more day of feeders for the beef cattle, for the heifers and bulls. And that's the feeding done. So it doesn't take too long anymore because we're half the amount of day feeders going in and the beat, we're nearly out of it, but I'm gonna have to show you the bulls we picked yesterday, the next ones to go, and just tell you what the daily weight gains are on them. Now that we're a month on beat, I'll tell you why we weren't why we didn't just go by beat at the very start instead of waiting to get our own beat pulled, I don't know. Hindsight's a great thing, but my god, the difference the beat has made was definitely a missing ingredient in our ration. Right. We get a load on for feed these beef cattle. Yeah, that's these are the next pen of bulls we're working out of and you can see all the orange marks the orange marks are the ones that's picked so they're fat enough and heavy enough so quite a few out of this pen to go and if you are wondering the cattle get bedded at night and by morning it looks like that but everyone gets fresh sheets to sleep on at night just on these boys here so they get up on top of the barrier to show because they don't look great when you look at them when you're below them but when you're above them they look a bit better um, but these boys here, when we weighed them yesterday, we had average daily weight gains, the heaviest 2.3. We had three bulls in here over two kilos. We had a lot of 1.7s, 1.9s, 1.6s, 1.5s, 1.3s. Had a couple down a kilo, and I think maybe one or two under a kilo. But averaging between the whole highs with lows, I'd say 1.4, 1.5 kilos a day is what these lads are doing. These boys hadn't been weighed in three weeks and we weighed them just they're the next ones to get picked from and the weight gains massive back where we want them to be that just goes to show that's what we were missing we were missing the beef from the diet definitely growing the six acres of beef next year definitely going to get it done on time hindsight we should have but hindsight's a great thing on another thing with beef if anyone is interested in growing beet this year, we're going back out growing beet for hire for people. If you're interested or want to learn more about it, just get in touch with us. Anyways, get the next diet feeder in and get that. So I'm just putting in the diet feeder here for the real good lads that we've picked from there showing you just a minute ago. Liv has gone just to check to see the feeder is going all right. And um, yeah, get these guys fed. And then that concludes the feeding or the diet feeding of the cattle for today. And we're back in the calf shed. Liv, how are things looking now? Um, five to feed in there, and eight to feed in there. So eight out of 20 to feed. That's not too bad. In five this side, but that's kind of understandable. The last two days, how many have we had in the big pen? Two. Two. But it's just this morning, because that was off. We have a problem. Just on the new calves that have arrived, we have three Herefords. We have two, sorry, Two Belgian Blues, there's one. Uh, I think that's, yeah, 4407 is the other one. Two or three Angus in there as well, and then the rest are Frisians and nice big calves. And also, you can see that little red guy there, lives calf that she called Twix. What is Twix? 
A limousine. A limousine. Bertie, you might just see him on top of the bales there. And Liv doesn't know how he got up there. Milk replacer meal has come and we do have a disinfecting bucket at the door. Liv changes every other day. Calves are doing pretty good. They're feeding, probably feeding the best we've ever had a batch of calves feeding. Uh, yesterday we had our 340 litres, the 14 litres left was it? And that was at nine, well no, it was 10 o'clock. It was half nine, 10 o'clock when we left the feeder last night. We'll just come back in to check up on what the guys with a jacket and touch wood. Not going too bad. We get the cows fed and now we'll go have a mug of coffee. Also, when we have a mug of coffee and I have internet, we'll announce the winner of who guessed what that feeder had put through right. And someone actually got it to the ton, nearly to the tons, and to basically the exact amount of liters, which we were quite surprised. Happy outlook. Happy out, bro. Always on. Good work on my so we're just leaving Mac Shacks there after having smashing jumbo breakfast and we're full now. Cattle are fed and we're fed now so we can get a good day's work done. It's only 12 o'clock there now so yeah I'll get a lot done before evening. It's absolutely miserable outside. Cold. Absolutely. And it's, very, it's quite cold too so. We went through the comments there and we seen who was the closest to it. So there was two or three there were quite close but we think the closest was Connor Breen, you guessed. 180,000 litres to 22 and a half tonne of powder. And the actual figure what that feeder put out in six seasons of calf rearing was 176,000 litres and 23 tonnes of powder. And just a lot of people are guessing there was a lot of wide range and variations there, but it was impossible to try and work it out because even if you sit down, it was X amount of calves, X amount of powder, X amount of litres and so on and so forth. That feeder for the first two years it was in, it only reared about 100 calves at any one time. But for the first two years it was never turned off. We were rearing calves throughout the year. Congratulations to Connor. Another shout out to another comment that had myself and Liv in absolute stitches was Lorraine. Lorraine, I can't pronounce it unfortunately. Gillahar, yeah, reckon we had 1.3 million tons of powder used. And as the comments under it said, that's nearly 4 billion euros worth of powder or 6,000 Arctic load of powder a year, which myself and everyone were just absolutely pissing ourselves at. No ill will or anything meant by mentioning it, it's just myself and Liv had a great laugh at it. Just, yeah. Every now and again you get a comment like that and just, congratulations Connor. If you get in touch with me through email at farmerphil135 at gmail.com and send me on your details we can get the hat posted out to you you never know we may have another competition coming up in the future for some more bits um, but anyways that's it so back to the yard now we get back to work not looking like we're going to get any slurry done this evening because this rain is just a bit too much we'll be on back to the yard we had an escape bee we we're at the Roscommon poultry market and we bought another I am semi that's a fully black hen and she was out so um but she's a lovely hen. Fully black, beetle green shine on her. She's called Michelle. She's a lovely, she's a lovely example of the bird, but she's out. So will we put her in the buyer or put her back in the hen house? Because- uh, Well, she's jumping over house. the wall, so yeah. put her in the buyer. I might put her in the buyer, but her, um, what would you say? Her partner is in the hen house. Yeah, but she can go with them after. Yeah. Liv and Troy are vaccinating and giving calves probiotics. I used to help the camera for them because they forgot. And just for people who are wondering, because I know we've never really introduced Troy. Troy is a young neighbor of ours. He's given us a hand at the weekends, especially with the calves and that. You would have seen him every now and again, the high vis jacket. But, um, so that's Troy. So anyways, I'm going to put this on time lapse and go back to cleaning out with Eric. Happy days. Well, maybe not happy for Eric, but anyways, all good live, yeah? IBR and the probiotics, that's what the calves are getting. Stop filming and start working. So, live and try, have the calves done all good? Yeah. Trying to get a tissue out of my pocket. So me and bro are working away here. This is rolling up a bit of piping, so we ne we have it nearly clean along here. We just have to move them few machines there, that pallet. We have to move, that's a tub of owl owl grass seed. 
there's that few sheets of plywood now i have to scrape down all the muck the biggest problem we have with here and it's not going to affect the calf either or that is that there's the drain from the other side of the bin and that upper the stables is it's an open drain when it comes through that it flows above ground here before it goes into the drain in the corner there it's something that needs to be done is dig a trench for it is it going to happen this time no it's not but when we have it all tidied up and the muck cleaned out of it this time around it hopefully won't be too bad it shouldn't affect the feeder because it's just a track along the middle of where it's supposed to flow yeah <laughs> anyways I gotta go get the gear out where it is for live. They're gonna go check on the heifers that are out. I'm gonna leave bro cleaning up here. Have fun bro. jobs ahead of us whenever we get to them I'm going out Monday and that but normally we'd have more dung out because on a normal year there'd be more wet spells and that's what we tend to do on wet days we start getting dung out onto the land got to the point where we're waiting on all the hay to be moved and for the telly and that always is the bit that catches us out at the farm on the farm is one loader and everyone's waiting for that loader to get work done to get onto the next bit really need a second loader loading shovel loader teleporter is the slowest part of the equation so anyways we've been home with this load of dung they're tipped up on some tailor's ground I'm standing the wrong side of the hose, getting skited. That's out of the way. My uncle's coming up for the skid steer, so that's going to be got rid of, thankfully. And then all that's left is, well, still quite a few square bales to be moved, them and rearranged them, and yeah. Yeah, I will, yeah. Yeah, slowly but surely we're getting there. Look at Alfie the dog. He's wearing a coat. We are well underway. The skid steer's gone, the grouper for the John Deere mower's gone. It just have to come back with the bucket now, scrape up that muck, shovel it all in, wash it down, and it will be putting in the feeder here and the stations here. It's all wet and miserable at the minute, but when that muck gets gathered up, it should start flowing the right way, but really it does need a channel dug from up there down under into the drain there getting there so we are getting there and now we're getting ready to expand the calf shed on down so we had to move the calves that well we had the three calves that were just about half milk and then we had lads that were outside but with the way the weather is grand when it's cold and dry but when it's cold and wet it's very hard in this these kind of stock especially that age outside so we're just putting them all in here till the weather improves and then go back out. So these are the Ahamborn calves. They're a little bit wet and cold of themselves, but they won't be long drying up in there now and warming up. They love the meal, don't they? Yeah, the green trough. Come on, bro. Topper. 
<laughs> We're just chopping straw into this lower half of the shed, which the calves are going to be getting in about. I think that was my shear pin. I think that was my shear pin. And now, when the pallet down for the bale to go on, so that it lets any moisture go out of the shed with the fall. So, just have to shake out the bit of straw, put through the straw blower, and the calves will be happy out. Won't they live? Extra space. I find somewhere to put the camera now. I find my cap now. Yeah. Did you do it then? You told me to mind the gap. That's our limousine calf there. He must be out of a Jersey cow. Because he has a black nose on him. Twix. And he's he's not over big. He's Twix. So he's not. He's my Meow. We are at ground level with the calf. Quite happy to have a new bed to there. Also that single bale of the chicane that's left is going to be like a, a I can't think of a jump for them. Because they're just going to be messing with it, jumping across it. Hey Twix. Oh, there's one trying to jump up. Hey Twixy. I think we can say the calves are very happy. <laughs> I think it's time to push into all the other cattle. We'll have the other cattle bedded while I like the straw blower going and um, feed the boys at the top there, make sure these are all fed. We'll probably let them out of the training pen. Let everybody come down and lie in fresh, clean sheets down. It's that time of evening again, so just check the feeder and we have four to feed. And that's in the training pen and the main pen. So very good, they copped on very quickly. I have three to feed in there, and one to feed in the main pen. So we'll get to it. First two in, having their dindins. And now, we're putting a few machines back here. This spot is tidy, once again. This spot here used to be where the cows come out of the milking parlor and then waited here before they went out. Step in the right direction, but as you can probably guess, the other stuff got put somewhere else. And just on that, the argument was, the skip is gone from the yard for putting the rubbish into, so just throw it across what I saw had another day. It'll be a problem for another day. I want a more permanent solution, but I lost that one. And as you can see with that shed there, it's needing some work. Or you say you should fix it and that. That shed is going to be fixed during the summer. It's getting new floor, new roof, raised other ends so we can get with the telly. And then we're going to set that up for rearing our lock of autumn calves. And that should suit us down to the ground for doing that job. So when you ask, are you going to do something? Yes, that is summer job. And there's another job we're thinking of doing with the milking parlor. But we'll leave that till we actually go to do it because just in case it doesn't happen, it's it's just one of them things. We won't get the feeder moved. Lives as she just showed, she's her four calves to feed there. We're not gonna move the feeder this evening. Next wet day, we're gonna get the feeder moved or we may put in the new feeder into here. I am I think for me, I want to move that feeder to there, but both Father Phil and Liv want to put the new feeder in there, provided all our grants and everything come through in time. The debate at the minute, but we'll see how that goes. The whole reason we tidied up that, and, and yes, there's more tidying to be done. The reason we done, that bit hiding is because our vet wants us to move our feeder and we aren't paying a vet to come here once a week or more to tell us what we need to do and then say ah we're not going to do it so we're going to get this shifted 
cats. Or we let out them calves out of the training pen. Once they're fed, we let them out and they can go off down. Or grand. I'll just do that now. Let's put up the bale up here and we'll watch them run to the other end of the shed. the bed in very poorly Thanks. so all the calves are fed so every evening we're changing the tits over and they sit in a bucket of Milton for the day so it keeps them clean so we're just doing that and that's them bedded up what's next on the list Liv? tea, tea. Okay. happy out up yeah, not too bad. All fed. All fed, all, all bedded. Fed. Only four out of 80. So what's that? That's five. 79. Sorry, 79. Let's say 80. Makes oh, it easier. On the bigger side, doesn't it? Let's say 80. 80 is just easier, isn't it? So 5%. Five percent. So only 5% of the calves had to be fed, which ain't bad. Especially when you consider calves only come yesterday. So one of the last jobs before we leave, is shut the goats up for the night. Yes, girl. Yes, Gwen. Gertrude! Gertrude's too busy filling her face. And they're self-bedding, aren't they, Liv? Yeah. They pull the docks that's in the hay into the bedding. They won't go out till the weather settles down again, will they? No. They'll probably, probably put them out with a batch uh, with the... the autumn-born calves, they could go out with them. Yeah. And then next winter, We'll go bringy. We'll go see a book, won't we? We'll go see a book. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we'll go see a book. Hey, Gertrude. So that concludes today. I know it's still bright. We could do more, but it's one of them mentally draining days. And it's a Saturday, so I think we'll look. I'll just put the feet up. Take it handy for this evening. Tomorrow, then, I think we're going to do a bit of work in the, in the orchard and the castle. Long get the cattle and then also go see our Jersey boy carcass and see how that turned out. But yeah, we go back in after tea, check the feeder again. We'll go back in then before we go to bed, check it again to make sure that it's still running and all is good that way. We're going to leave it at that for today's video. Mostly just trying to get a feeder moved that we didn't get moved because you want to put it, the new feeder there and I want to move the old feeder. So neither might get done for now, but we're ready to do either. So. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Sunday, live Sunday. You should know the schedule by now. Anyways, that's it from us. Good luck.